This vineyard is really, really unusual. It may just look like any other little vineyard, but I'll just locate it for you first. So over there in the distance is the village of Paziol. So we're actually closer to Paziol today than we are to Touchon. So Paziol there, just behind it, the Canigou, um, which is the foothills of the Pyrenees and the Roussillon. So pan round, might see Diane just in the distance over there. Pan round behind these mountains here is the Mediterranean. So I'm facing south and pan round more. Uh, you've got the Chateau d'Aguila in the distance, the wonderful Chateau d'Aguila. Behind that, you've got Narbonne and the rest of the Languedoc. So we really are on the languedoc roussillon border here. Pan round more and you've got the amazing Toche Mountain. So the Toche Mountain rises to 900 meters, lovely limestone massif, as we say in French here, the Toche Mountain. And pan right round over there is uh, the direction of Mori and Padern and Cucugnon. Come back round and we've done a full circle back to Paziol here. So, where am I today? Well, this may not look like the most exciting vineyard, but it's actually the rarest grape variety that I have. I'm actually standing in a Carignan Gris vineyard. And I may actually be one of the only people, basically in the world, that can actually stand in a Carignan Gris vineyard. It is so rare that it says officially there's only 1.4 hectares of this particular vine. That's Carignan Gris, uh, 1.4 hectares in the world, and that's planted in and around Perpignan. So I've got a third of a hectare here. This makes me feel really good. I've got a third of a hectare here. It is planted half and half Carignan Gris and Carignan Noir. So impossible to say. Uh, before the grapes come out, whether it's Carignan Gris or Carignan Noir. But I do have, we make about 800 bottles a year. That's it, the full production, 800 bottles a year. That's all from the Carignan Gris. So I have approximately 800 vines. So if it's true that there's only 1.4 hectares in the whole world, I think I have a slight monopoly going on. So let's take a look. You can see this morning we've got, again, the dew on the vines. It's, it is a lovely morning down here. It's already about 27 degrees, um, so it's really hot. Um, and I think it's going to get a little bit hotter today, but it's actually damp too. So with it being damp, this is ideal conditions for the spread of mildew. So, so far we've been lucky. There have been a couple of outbreaks in the village. We're hearing sort of in the, in the village that people do have mildew. So we are still out there. Jean-Marc was out until uh, midnight last night, just protecting the vines. We're organic, so we're spraying with copper um, and sulfur, copper for the mildew. So uh, here we are. Karen Yongri is just absolutely lovely. So you may wonder, how did I come across this extremely rare vineyard? Well, actually, this vineyard is probably the most awkward grape variety to grow. It is a real pain in the derriere, however beautiful it may be looking this morning. Good morning, vines. And it's a pain in the derriere because the, the Carignan Gris takes forever, like literally forever to ripen. So if you imagine, we start the harvest, we pick most of the whites, we pick them at the beginning of September, end of August. Uh, we then go on to pick the reds. So we pick the reds right up until mid-October. And then we come back and the Carignan Gris from this vineyard is still not completely ripe. And we're talking like mid-October. So a good six weeks after the other whites are ready. Uh, last year we picked it, it was the beginning of October. We picked it and made the wine and it still only made 12% alcohol. So you can understand why people don't like it because if you're in a cooperative system, how on earth do you cope with Carignan Gris? You can't like 
at the co-op they'll open for white wines to begin with and then they'll move on to red so you can't then just suddenly ask them oh could you open it up again because I've got 800 bottles worth of Carignan Gris coming in it just doesn't really work so people would either have to pick it with the whites if they picked it with the whites then they would make that would lower their overall alcohol um, which is not good they'd be paid less or they could leave it and pick it with the reds and just try and hide it amongst the reds you can actually tell the difference because it's called Grenache Gris but the grapes are absolutely gorgeous sort of pink color a lovely lovely pink color let me just it's obviously too early to show you the color of the grapes but this is like you can see the bunches are changing here Again, if you have any questions or any comments, please put them in the question box at the bottom of the screen, the little square with a question on it, and then I can pick them up at the end. You see that? So you can really, really clearly see where the vines, the grapes are forming. So they've grained, they've pollinated, and there you can see where the little bunches are going to be. And it's looking like a bumper crop. Carignan, as you know, is a really high yielding vine. So big yield. And in actual fact, I think this year they're going to be too big for the quality of wine we want to make. So in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be coming in and actually thinning out the vines to reduce the yield because they're, it's looking there, big yield. So we want to make about a bottle per vine and one of the reasons as well you might have noticed that I'm on the flat I'm in the plain and if you look at the soil I think this is the closest we get to having the same soil as my dad up in Leicestershire can you see that so it's actually soil um, there's more earth topsoil here than there has been in any other of my vines you can see that so and that's because we're actually in the valley bottom so a lot more fertile it used to be covered by a lake and then river so lots of silt sort of deposits and alluvial so as we walk up the vineyard you'll see there's more stones towards the river that is actually a dry bed at the moment but back to Carignan Gris yeah I think it's absolutely fantastic grape variety because of that low alcohol and because of the lovely acidity that it brings to the wines so if you think it's quite difficult to get a lovely fresh style of white wine from down here in the longer dot because it's so hot and sunny, most of our whites would be at 13.5% alcohol, whereas the lovely Carignan Gris takes forever to ripen. I remember in the first year when we were actually given this vineyard by one of the people from the cooperative, you can understand why we were given it, and uh, we had no idea exactly what it was like. Um, and we just kept coming out tasting the grapes and chewing the skins to see if it was ripe. And we were just like, this is never going to ripen. This is never, ever actually going to ripen. And then finally, as I said, mid-October, it suddenly decided to ripen. But even when it's ripe, it's only 12 degrees. But fantastic for fresh mineral style of wine. And... Uh, maybe thinking well actually we were thinking i don't know if you're thinking this we were thinking well we'd like more of this this is the great variety of the future um because it's just so fresh and lovely and we we're thinking how can we get some more so uh, we found up the nursery and we said uh, could we have some more have you got some carignan gris in stock and they just completely laughed at us and said there is you just cannot get this grape variety. This grape variety wasn't recognised as a grape variety until 2017. So it wasn't on any official lists until 2017. That meant it basically did not exist and it would just be chucked in to the different blends um, and uh, blended with like Grenache Blanc, Grenache Gris, Macabre, uh, and it just sort of disappeared. And it wasn't until 2017 that actually came up on the list of official grape varieties. So when we asked, you know, could we have some little young vines? They said, no way. And we had to go through the Chamber of Agriculture and we're actually on the list. So two years ago, we phoned them up and said, can we have some Carignan Gris? They said, actually, uh, we've just located a, a healthy vine. 
So you have to have a very healthy vine if you want to propagate, and that's not easy. I mean, these are around about 60, 70 years old. Um, and so they said, we found one healthy vine in the village of Mongaya, for those of you who know it down here, in the village of Mongaya, and we're going to propagate from that. So they basically said, call us back in another two years time, by which time we will have 500 plants that will be available for you to plant a little tiny vineyard. So four years to get a tiny plant. We could try and propagate it ourselves, but as I mentioned, these vines are 60, 70 years old. Um, they're not in the best of health, although they look lovely today. There is, um, there's a disease called cornue, which is fan leaf, and old vines are very susceptible to that. And a lot of mine actually have that, which doesn't, at the moment, it's not a major problem, but you wouldn't want to propagate a vine that has cornue or fan leaf. Um, so that's the reason that we didn't do it ourselves. But I've had loads of people like from Spain and uh, phoning up saying, can we come and take some cuttings from your Carignan Gris vineyard? So just look at that. And then, yeah, let's look at the soils as we're down here. Um, and you can see a lot more pebbles. There's the riverbed is literally, if I come up here, the riverbed is uh, in those bushes. Um, sort of in the middle ground over there, and it would have come down here. And there you go, lots more pebbles. So a very fertile, relatively fertile, we are in Tuchon, fertile soil here, which gives very high yields. Uh, so we are gonna come in and actually thin out the carignan. We don't want them to work too hard. They're 60, 70 years old. And I'm being a bit vague on the age because it's actually really difficult to tell the age of the vine. You can't, it's not like a tree, you can't count the rings. Um, and there's no official record of ages of vines in this area. So you really have to try and either know the people. So Roger, lovely Roger, my father-in-law, he's quite useful. If he can remember when a particular vineyard was planted, then we get an idea of the age. So it relies on memory or uh, at the cooperative, if they didn't know, they just said it's it's pre-1905 so a lot of the vines are just pre-1905 so this one ran about 60 probably more 70 years old and one of my obviously favorite because most people would run a mile from Carignan Gris but I didn't we, we absolutely embraced this um, and we made a separate wine from it just a hundred percent Carignan Gris uh, when we started and we just make 800 bottles approximately every single year. So let me just take a look at your questions. The sun's gone in there. Come on sun. Okay, question box. Oops. <laughs> Did you get <laughs> an in-depth in look <laughs> at one of the vines then? I'm just trying to press the question button but here we go. Sorry about that. Um, so does the vineyard, here's one from Liam, does the vineyard ever get flooded from the river? It does, um, but only in really, really wet years. So this year was wet, but it wasn't disastrously wet. It goes back to I think it's 1998 when we had disastrous floods and this, this river uh, that's over there behind the bushes would have actually come up here and flooded. But it's, uh, it's like once every 30 years that this vineyard would actually get flooded. So it's not a major problem. Let's see if I can press the button. Um, so it's one from Nikki. So apart from tasting the grapes to check the ripeness, what other measures do you use? You mentioned 13 degrees. Can I get the rest of the question? Um, okay, so um, basically we only measure the sugar like once in the growing season. So we will come in with our refractometer and measure the potential sugar amount in the vines. And then we do it, it's all down to tasting. We don't use any analysis on it. We actually come in and taste the grapes. And when you're tasting the grapes, you have to make sure that the sugar is ripe, so they're nice and sweet. But more importantly, or as important, you have to make, you have to make sure 
that the um, skins are ripe as well. And that's why with a Carignan Gris, waiting for the skins to ripen, you want phenolic ripeness in the skins. Otherwise you get quite a tart, astringent style of wine if you don't wait for the skin ripeness too. Here's one from Dan, good to see you from Thermiston. Uh, what did the previous owner do with the grapes? Well, who knows what she did with the grapes. Um, I think she probably uh, either pick them with the whites but I doubt they did that because if you pick them with the other whites the alcohol would literally be around about 8% alcohol and that would lower your average well your payment because of the low alcohol so I think they probably quite sneakily hid it in between the red grapes perhaps put it at the bottom of the trailer and uh, hid it there we pick everything by hand so as I mentioned here um, everything's picked by hand and so that means even though we've got grey Carignan Gris and Carignan Noir in the vineyard, uh, we will come in twice and pick them separately. And that's what you can do when you're picking by hand. Um, okay, so um, is there a difference in the DNA of Carignan and Carignan Blanc? That's from Tony Parkinson. Um, that's quite a technical question for me. I don't believe there is. It's a mutation, it's a color mutation. Um, so the technical details, not sure, but it is a mutation of the red grape that over the years has mutated into a Carignan Gris, so a grey colour. The reason that I've got Carignan Gris to begin with in this vi vineyard um, is probably just due to poor selection. It would be a Massal selection, so they would have done the grafting themselves and the propagation themselves and probably just a poor selection. And then question here lots of questions fantastic do these wines have any support that's from webs 280 um, no this is a great thing about carignan carignan absolutely is perfect for the conditions down here that means very windy so we have windy dry conditions the carignan loves that although it is a bit susceptible to mildew but it loves uh, the wind and you can see it's really strong so these shoots coming out here are really strong and most of them now they're over the very sensitive fragile time so these will withstand the very strong winds so they don't actually need any support these literally you can see no support here even for old vines and they so they just shoot upwards um, like that and roll hold on to that camera um, a couple more questions so yeah, that one uh, is from GRI. Uh, do you think, basically, is Carignan Gris the ideal great variety for global warming? Absolutely. I absolutely 100% agree. This is a fan agree on the Carignan Gris. Um, this is a fantastic grape for global warming because of that fresh acidity. If we could get more of it, I would definitely try and find more of it. Uh, a question on the age of the vines in 1905. Why did the co-op classify everything on that? That's from Matthew. Matthew, I'm going to ask Jean Marc tonight. He was president of the cooperative for 13 years, so he knows about all things cooperative. I've basically got no idea why they set on 1905, but I will come back and answer that tomorrow. So I think I've answered most. Uh, here's a good question from Julia. Um, Julia says, what does it taste like? Yeah, so you may all be dying to know what does Carignan Gris taste like. And if you've been fortunate to be able to purchase one of my 800 bottles that I make per vintage, you'll, you will know. It's a delicious wine. It's basically in a category all of its own. Not particularly fruity, very minerally and quite sort of herb, herb based. So lots of herbs in there. But what I suggest, would you be on for this? Perhaps on Friday night, uh, if me and myself... No, me, sorry, me and myself and Jean-Marc go up and we do a tasting of the Carignan Gris from the rock. What do you think about that? Do you think, would you join us on uh, Friday evening at 7.30? So I'll still do the one in the morning, um, Friday morning ramble, and then in the evening to kick off the weekend. Why don't we have a glass of Carignan Gris together from the rock in the vineyard? If we do that, then we can give you the full tasting. Uh, on the full tasting notes on Carignan Gris. Fantastic, so 
don't forget to get it in the diary. That'd be half past seven. That's um, UK time, 19.30 UK time. Uh, on my rock up here, it'd be 8.30 French time. Just show you, look, you see how big the grapes are getting now. Really like little peas here. So fantastic to do that. And um, let's just check one more time the questions. But it's been great to be able to show you this vineyard. I mean, when we first got it, I was like, why do we want this vineyard? It's on the plain, it's flat, it's quite fertile soil. Um, it did have old vines. And this is one of those cases when it's actually the interest of the old vine that and the grape variety that was more important than the location because to get this much Carignan Gris as I said only 1.4 hectares of Carignan Gris planted um, in the world officially I think there's a lot more well a lot more a bit more that is unofficial just because it wasn't actually recognized until 2017 so a very obscure grape as you know um, we really like obscure grapes at Domaine Jones and I can't wait to taste it with you on Friday up from my vineyard. Great. So um, that's it for today. Hopefully Jean-Marc's going to be with me tomorrow. We're going to go into one of Jean-Marc's vineyards. Um, I say hopefully the weather's better, but it's still very good weather for mildew. So uh, we're still out protecting the grapes. So hopefully be one in, in one of his vineyards tomorrow. He's just gone shopping. His shopping list is a couple of nuts and bolts, three wing mirrors for the tractor, uh, repair the hydraulic pump for the tractor, and uh, he's broken the manometer on the sprayer. So uh, typical John Mark shopping list. He's off to Narbonne today to do that, but should be back tomorrow. So tomorrow morning, Thursday, I'll be out in one of his vineyards with John Mark. Um, and we'll be looking for a very rare bird.